Hi guys, welcome back to Wildebeard Reviews, and welcome back to What's on Your Pull List, the weekly show where we talk about our favorite day of the week, New Comic Book Day. How are you guys doing? Hopefully you had a fantastic weekend, and hopefully you're going to have a fantastic week. You guys know what we do on the show. We go through all the comics that I'm going to be picking up this week, and we go through all of your comments that you left on last week's video. But before we do any of that, as always, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, Stephen and Nigel Russell, Frank Keith, Dominic, Chris, Daniel, Brayden, Donovan, David, Will, Robert, Doug, Adam, John, and Joe. Thank you guys so much for your continued financial support of the channel. It truly helps me do everything that I do here behind the scenes to make this channel work. Now, one other thing before we get into uh, the normal stuff here. Last week, I appeared on another comic book channel called uh, Forced Adversity, and uh, he that creator has two channels. Another one is Anomic Comics, a new uh, ch uh, channel he's starting to spin up. I left the links for those in the pinned comment down below and on uh, in the, the community tab. Uh, one of them is just a clip from the larger video, but go ahead and check that out. Uh, mostly we talked about the comics that I was picking up last week and the comics he was picking up, but we also talked about some other stuff there, just kind of general comic book stuff, the X-Men and the MCU, some stuff like that, so be sure to check that out, and if you want, give him a like and a sub over on his channel. All right, guys, so let's talk. start talking about this week's comics. As always, kicking off with our featured issues. Now, last week our featured issues were the Hellfire Gala, and guess what? This week our featured issues are the Hellfire Gala. Now, just like last week, this week we have another three X-Men issues tying in to the Hellfire Gala. Those are Excalibur 21, X-Men 21, and Children of the Atom number four. So backing up to Excalibur 21, Richter apparently hates parties, even the nice ones, and with Captain Britain's return to a changed world, this is this one is looking to be not so nice. Excalibur's earth-shattering Hellfire Gala issue will change Krakoan diplomacy forever. Then the middle one is X-Men 21, written by Jonathan Hickman with, I'm sure, amazing artwork from Russell Dowderman. He's the one that designed, I believe, most, if not all, of the uh, Krakoan, or the, uh, the Hellfire Gala kind of high fashion costumes. The, the heroes of Krakoa debut. It's a, it's a changing of the guard as the first X-Men team of Krakoa debuts. One era ends here as a new one begins and the handoff happens here and then finally children of the atom and number four dreams die young Krakoa is opening its doors for the hellfire gala question mark sounds like the perfect opportunity for the children of the atom kids to visit after all Krakoa is their home right what could stop them or rather who now i can't remember what video was on or who i was talking with in the comments but someone asked if children of the atom was going to tie into the hellfire gal and at the time i didn't think it was that was obviously my mistake it clearly is here as it is uh as it is, as it is tying in i don't know how much it's going to tie in uh and if this is a book that you don't want to pick up because uh, it's not a series you're reading or you're a little tight on the budget this week don't worry i am going to do a review just like i do all of them uh do a full review on this one and go over all of its implications uh, tying into the Hellfire Gala and all of that right here on the channel. But the important issue this week I think is going to be X-Men number 21. Uh, as always in the back of the uh, the current run of X-Men books or uh, any of the uh, X titles there's those uh, charts that kind of show you the order and kind of publishing uh, dates of all the books uh, and the reading order. This one is the red highlighted issue for the week. So given that they're uh, announcing the new X-Men team which we already know who they are um, this is going to be a big one. We also saw over the course of the last uh, book, the three issues we had last week, that Emma Frost makes some sort of big announcement. Not sure if it is the new uh, X-Men team, if that's what that big announcement is, or if it's something that's coming down the line, maybe in a planet-sized X-Men, which I think... I, there's there's some you know uh, obviously the other theories out there uh, my theory of what they're announcing is that they're going to terraform Mars and the mutants are leaving Earth to go live on another planet that's my personal theory other ones are uh, thinking that they're going to uh, reveal the resurrection protocols and maybe even announce that they're going to start doing humans or something like that we'll have to wait and see but I'm loving the fr the Hellfire Gal first three issues last week just got better and better uh, issue over issue with of course Hellions being my favorite the funniest 
definitely of them all. Although uh, the uh, Deadpool showing up in uh, X Force gave it a run for its money, so super excited about it. This uh, these new issues this week. All right, uh, kicking over to uh, the comments from last week. We're going to kick it off with Ed Boy in the Cut says this week I have Ascentia number five, Green Lantern number three. Loving this series so far. Hellions number twelve, easily the best book. Marauders twenty one and X Force twenty and Swamp Thing number four. Ram V is killing it as well. I haven't read anything from Ram V that I have not liked, so it's good to hear that he is continuing that trend there on Swamp Thing. Of course, Hellions, like I've always said, is the best book right there uh, for the X-Men book, and Green Lantern has been really, really good. I think I posted my review for that yesterday. I'm going to post this on Monday, so I think I posted my review for Green Lantern 3 on uh, Sunday, so I really enjoyed that book as well. Kwaku says, hey Beard, hope you had a great weekend. I did. Hopefully you had a great weekend last weekend and a good week during the week. Uh, I'm looking forward to how this gala goes. It's a very different type of crossover than most superhero comics, and with how high-concept sci-fi the hickman Krokoa Aaron has been, I'm sure whatever the mutants have in store to show the rest of the world must be impressive. I think a fair few, uh, I think like a fair few others, my money is on Magneto's Omega-level mutant project is to terraform Mars, there you go, as a new world just for mutants. That is what I'm thinking it's going to be as well. We're getting something called planet-sized X-Men and there's kind of a red circle uh, motif which is definitely indicative uh, to me at least of Mars. So that's where, that's I think that's where uh, the smart money is going to go. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 67, Basilisk number 1, Batman 109 could this be the Peacekeeper 01's first appear appearance? Could be. It definitely was. Black Hat number 7, Crime Syndicate 4, Crush and Lobo number 1, Deep Beyond 5, Firepower 12, Green Lantern 3. This has been a really interesting start. Quote unquote, destroying the core has been done before, but I like the character work and hopefully Thorin does something new with the concept. I completely agree. I really like where they're going with it. I like the, uh, it's interesting because issue 3 was kind of broken up into two stories and it didn't feel like a primary story and a backup story. It kind of felt like two primary stories where we had one focusing on Jon Stewart and then one focusing on uh, Joe Mullen there on Oa after the Central Power power battery exploded, so I really like the way uh, they're setting that up. Hellions number 12, can't wait to see our lovable losers crash the party. That is exactly what we got, and it was damn near perfection. Heroes Reborn at number 5, let's see what Aaron does with Batman, but Marvel, there you go. Uh, the Immortal Hulk 47, can't believe how close we are to the end now. Iron Man or Iron Man Annual at number 1, using all of the annuals to tell a story is going to be pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Go, like, Are they going around to all of the different Avengers and they each get um, an annual and it all kind of ties into one story. And that's, that's a pretty cool idea. I like that. Justice League is 62, Marauders 21. It's finally here. Marauders has been hinting about this for a long time, so I'm sure it'll be worth the wait. Interestingly, there's no reading order for this, so I hope uh, as uh, hope as uh, also as you follow week uh, week of release, it'll work. I think they're, I, I'm reading it in the order they present it in the back of the book. I'm assuming that is the official reading order. It doesn't say part one, part two, or anything like that, but I'm reading it in the order that Marvel lists it and hoping that's some semblance of, of a reading order. Noctera number four, man, this book d just doesn't let up. Savage Avengers 21, and then Suicide Squad 4, and then Swamp Thing number four, The Art of Writing. This is uh, The Art, The Writing. This is a worthy introduction to a new Swamp Thing and X-Force 4. That's another... Um, uh, uh, accolade there for um, for or another call out there for Swamp Thing number four. I guess I'm missing something with that one. Uh, Noble AH says, a great video, Will Beard. Thank you, good sir. To answer your question about Magneto and the Mutant Force, it's an okay story. I'm pretty sure it's a one shot that ends on a cliffhanger. I would say you only have to know that the Squadron Supreme are the main heroes and not the Avengers. Good to know. Not sure I would want to leave on a cliffhanger and jump over to another book, so I'll leave that one uh, for, for later on. This week I'm getting Noctera number four. Heroes Reborn 5, uh, Crime Syndicate 4, The Next Batman, Second Son 3, Iron Fist, Heart of the Dragon 6, Heroes Reborn, American Knights number 1, and Heroes Reborn, American Knights, Marvel Double Action number 1, and Crush and Lobo number 1. You're going to have to let me know how that Crush and Lobo uh, book was. I liked the character Crush uh, from the Teen Titans book. I stopped reading the Teen Titans Academy book, and I know she kind of left that book, so if that first issue was pretty good, you'll have to let me know, and I might pick that up, or at least uh, grab it. 
when it's in trade or, you know, read it when it hits uh, DC Universe. All right, Jason Davison says, thanks again for the video, Wildebeer, and for grinding it out in the midst of trying to go on VK. You're absolutely welcome for that, sir. Hope you had a good weekend. I definitely did over there uh, hanging out with my family up in Oklahoma. That was the main focus of the vlog that I posted last week, so be sure to check that out here on the channel. I have all things X-Men this week and Immortal Hulk 47. Have you been following Immortal Hulk? I think it's great, but some of the Green Door stuff got a little too confusing for me, and I feel like the qu the plot has stalled quite a bit. I really loved the Devil Hulk persona terrorizing criminals at the very beginning of the run. Would have loved to see more of that. Have a great week. I have not followed it. Uh, I'm not up to date on it. I've read... Um the first five trays, and I think I have the sixth one over there waiting for me to read. I'm going to finish it out, but what I've read of it, roughly half at this point, has been fantastic. I've absolutely loved it, and if, if someone out there wants to get into it, uh, it does have, it, it is kind of steeped in uh, Hulk history. There's a lot of recurring characters and stuff in there, but uh, I'm not the biggest Hulk aficionado out there. I think you can definitely read it, so hopefully it ends on a really good, solid, uh, strong note, uh, because I am planning on finish on finishing reading it at, at some point. All right, the Pratt LP says, yeah, I'm so excited about this. This is so why I read X-Men. I hope it's exciting and the relay races, uh, as the relay races in X of Swords, woo, yes, oh, I was amazing. This is also why I love uh, X-Men. There's just so many characters and the way they interact at the party and everything like that, especially Hellions. Man, just look, we have a drunk nanny, the character nanny, who is uh, a mutant in an eggshell costume, pouring drinks in a hole at the top of her mech suit, gets drunk, and then when a, a fight pops off, she smashes a bottle and tries to shiv Mr. Sinister. It's it's incredible. She yells, Judgment Day, motherfucker, as she tries to sh shiv him with a broken bottle. It's incredible. I, I love it so damn much. Just the characters are just... Beautiful. Perfect. I love it. All right. Sapphire Glade Comics says, This week I have, let me see here, 15 comics I want to pick up. So, RIP Wallet. Yeah, dude. Ooh, that's that's rough. And I have to pick up my pulls from last week, too. So, double RIP to my wallet. Hopefully you like ramen. Because it sounds like your wallet is going to be in for a hurting. Uh, Batman 109. Glad the story picked up. I was worried there. Yeah, I haven't reviewed it yet. yet but uh, Batman 109 was, was really good. Batman Catwoman 5. Batman and the adventures uh, continue with season two and number one yep it's back once again you're gonna have to let me know how that was i saw that coming out and i read six of the seven issues from season one and i decided i wasn't gonna dive into season two but you'll have to let me know how it was if it was good i might pick it up or wait for the trade on it well we'll have to see black cat number seven crime syndicate four deep beyond five heroes reborn and number five it's an interesting uh it's interesting and offers a different view into the marvel universe here Heroes Reborn, American Knights 1. I want the full story, so you gotta get the tie-ins to Heroes Reborn, Marvel Double Action number 1. It feels like a tie-in, a tribute to something in the past. Well, I know Marvel Double Action was kind of a one of those old, like, uh, like anthology kind of books where they did, like, just, um, like, one-off stories and things like that. Uh, the Invincible Red Sonya number 2, a sleeper title. Iron Man Annual number 1, a new Infinity Stone story starts here. Ooh, that's interesting. I actually just rewatched uh, Avengers Infinity Infinity War for the first time in a while uh, last night, and God, that movie, it, it's amazing, it holds up. Hopefully I'll get to watch uh, Endgame uh, some night this week. Just to, just to tie off the twofer. Uh, Justice League at 62, The Nice House on the Lake. I will hop on this, so uh, so hope I can get a copy. That book was amazing. Uh, my comic shop gave me the hard sell on it, and when I say hard sell, I mean they put it in my hands and said, buy this, you're going to love it, and they weren't wrong. That was like a 10 out of 10 book. I actually put a little short mini review on that, like 55 seconds or something here on the channel because I loved it so much. I didn't want to get into actual reviewing the details of the book because I think you need to read it for yourself the first time, but holy crap, it was an incredible book. James Tynion, uh, again, doing great stuff. Noctera 4, Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters, number one. This will be the main series for the event. Okay, I think that's it. Like I said, if my LCS doesn't have any copies available of certain titles that aren't on my pull list yet, that's okay. That would be good. It means I don't need it, but I'll probably hunt it down, hunt down what I miss when I get to my LCS on. All right, Hawkeye TS says, hey, Wildebeard, hope your week has 
has it gone well. It did indeed. Hopefully yours did as well. Not that I mind, I really mind much, but they're not all-encompassing juggernauts pulling the whole Marvel Universe. But I'd like to point out that there are three separate events starting going on this week. That is insane. I guess, yeah, we've got Hellfire Gala. Um, Heroes Reborn, and then um, the Iron Man thing, right? Yeah, the Infinite Destinies. Again, you call it out. That's that was one that I was unfamiliar with. That's a lot. That's that really is a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Black Hat uh, number seven, Hellions number twelve, a psychopaths at the party. What could go wrong? Heroes Reborn at number five. Iron Man Annual number one. The beginning of the Infinite Destinies event. It appears to be starting in a variety of annuals, and then we'll transition into Black Cat's main book. Black Cat? Really? That's odd. Uh, maybe more. Only the future solicitations will know. That Sword Guardians of the Galaxy Lost uh, Annihilation crossover has added an old man cable one-shot now, by the way. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you for calling that out, because that might be something uh, I would have missed. The last Infinity Stone-related event seemed to have a very meh reaction, so I'm hoping this one turns out better. If it's run by Al Ewing, I think it will. I think that's what I've heard uh, he's kind of pushing into the more cosmic stuff so and he's the one doing um sword so hopefully he's uh he's he's doing really well on that he's obviously doing fantastic on uh immortal hulk uh noctera um i'm sorry uh, marauders 21 this is one of the four issues collected in the trade paperback version of the hellfire gala collection along with x-men planet size x-men and sword so that probably means it's going to be one of the more important ones to read and note that the hardcover version is collecting all of the gala issues for any other collectors who may be planning to buy it in trade that's good to call out thank you for that sir uh, i'm always i'm not always familiar with how they collect the things marauders is a great uh read anyway so i'm really looking forward to it and those four issues that you call out x-men planet it, size X-Men and Sword along with Marauders. I think those are the four that are uh, listed as being the red important titles in the, in the reading order or the publication order in the back so it makes sense that they would group those together. Noctera number four, Savage Avengers 21, X-Force 20, Beast please put on proper pants. No, he doesn't put on proper pants. He still has those weird like high waters and maybe make the tiniest bit of effort not to turn into your Age of Apocalypse counterpart. Nope, he doesn't do that either. <laughs> Probably far too late for the latter, but the pants are still an option. It's an option he unfortunately doesn't take. I'll probably wait to comment next video uh, until Loki is available so I can share my thoughts even if that means uh, being a bit late posting my poll list. I know Marvel has a massive docket uh, for Disney Plus shows, but I'm curious as to whether they'll actually be able to get enough done to have even close to this much content in 2022, or if the p pandemic just delayed some extra stuff into 2021 that would otherwise have been spaced out between the 2020 films. I've also heard that CGI work might actually be uh, becoming a bottleneck for the industry as a whole because there are only so many companies that can put out the quality that is expected these days and they're completely flooded with work. So it might not even be up to Marvel uh, up to Marvel how much they can realistically be finished in a year. If this is an abnormally large slate of content this year, we should enjoy it to the fullest while we can. Anyway, I hope everyone has a great week. That's a very interesting um, thing to think about. I hadn't even thought about that. Like I knew 2021 was the first year in like 10 or 12 years that we hadn't had any MCU content whatsoever. And obviously we're getting a glut of it this year. We've already had WandaVision and then Falcon and Winter Soldier. We've got Loki starting up here in a couple days. And then we've got uh, Black Widow showing up, dropping on Disney+, Plus, Shang-Chi or Shang-Chi. And then, I think, don't we get another one near the end of the year? Like uh, Spider-Man sometime this year. And then Eternals, like in November or something like that. So yeah, there's a ton of Marvel coming out this year. And I do agree that some of it is probably just because it was delayed from 2021. One, and so we're getting a c kind of compressed year like you know a, what was supposed to happen in, in both years got compressed into one that's really interesting that's like the marvel universe or the mcu is like bottlenecking the rest of the cgi industry their special effects um or after effects industry with all of their work that's that's really interesting. All right, and then uh, Exora Di or Azora Divided says, I'm really not liking Heroes Reborn, and nothing from Jason Aaron is good the last couple years. Sorry to hear that. I think some of the others are enjoying it, but hey, that's the beauty of comics. If you don't like that one, stop buying it, and there's plenty else out there for you to pick up. And then uh, Toronto Style Papua just says, no thanks. Well, you're not welcome, sir. I don't know what you mean by that, but uh, it, no, if you say no thanks, then I guess you're just not welcome. All right, guys, that's all for your comments from 
last week. Be sure to let me know what comics you're picking up in the uh, comments on this video, and like always, I'll go through it in next week's video. All right, we did all the Marvel stuff I got going on this week with all the uh, X-Men stuff, so let's kick it over to DC with Batman Urban Legends number four. Uh, now, I'm actually not going to read the big paragraph there. Uh, I have not read issues two or three of Batman Urban Legends. I have them. I have not had a chance to read them. I've been, you know, traveling last week. I was out of town for like four days. Um, I didn't feel so great one day this weekend, so I just haven't had a chance to uh, to get to a lot of uh, some of this backlog of books. So I think I'm, I'm going to pick up issue four here because I believe it's the last entry in the Jason Todd story. Um, we'll have to see how the others are doing. This might be one that I drop from my pull list. I haven't seen a lot of you guys or really anyone from uh, the comment section asking me to review this one, so at this point it'd probably be just me buying it for myself. So I'll probably pick this one up this week, read all three of them uh, that I'm behind on over the weekend, and then make a choice whether or not to uh, to drop this one from my pull list, unfortunately. Alright, next up is Detective Comics 1037, Public Enemy number 1, Batman and Public Enemy number two, Bruce Wayne. Got the one-two punch there for good old Bats. When both Bruce and his alter ego are implicated in the same crime, the cops have some questions, and the Dark Knight is going to have to think quick or risk his identity being exposed to the world. But law enforcement isn't the only entity hunting down the bat. The titanic, titanic Mr. Worth is ready to use all his money and power to see uh, Batman six feet under, featuring not one, but two additional epics. First up, Three Minutes. It explores the early days of Lucius' Fox introduction to the world of Batman. Then in the ex then in exclusive, the Gotham Gazette's own Deb Donovan runs down the players in the power players in Gotham City. So this one sounds pretty amazing. I have not had a chance to read or review issue 1036 of Detective. I'll try and make that one a priority over the next couple days before we get this next issue. Again, being out of town for four days there and traveling just was a number on the production schedule behind scenes here so hopefully I can get caught up and then unfortunately another one that I have not had a chance to uh, to catch up on is Future State Gotham number one this is one that I might read issue one of this week before Wednesday and make a choice of whether or not to pick up issue two come Wednesday Future State Gotham number two tragedy has brought Gotham City to its knees countless people are dead seemingly at the hands of the next Batman which is uh, Tim or yeah Tim Fox I believe uh, Gotham demands justice and Red Hood has vowed to answer their call, even if that means beating his way through Nightwing and the rest of the Bat family to do it. God, I, I, I say that I might drop this one, but that just sounds too awesome for me to drop, getting all of my favorite Batman characters in there together, so I'll, I'll probably pick this one up. Also, uh, you know, Jason Todd just looking, doing his best Akira impression on this cover is is pretty badass. Alright, moving on here to the indie books that I'm picking up. First one is Proctor Valley Road, number four. Talked about this one a lot. This is one that I'm probably going to wait to read once it's all said and done since it's only a five-ish miniseries and then bring you guys my thoughts on the, on the series as a whole. Probably non-spoiler thoughts to begin with and then thoughts on the entire series in, in detail or in spoilers um, after that. I've been enjoying this one. It's kind of a really great um, period horror piece. If uh, if that's your if that's your bag, I know a couple of you guys out there. I think John Thomas, you're reading this one as well. I think I've seen it on a couple other guys' pull list. This one's great. Artwork is pretty solid. Boom Studios just puts out amazing, amazing work this the, uh, these days. Speaking of Boom Studios, we got a Mighty Morphin number eight. Uh, will the Power Rangers be able to save Angel Grove from Lord Zed and his Putty Primes? Calling them, I've been calling them Chaos Putties. Putty Primes is a, is a pretty good name for them. Uh, well, Tommy's with Tommy's life on the line, the rest of the team will have to rely on new allies with their own agenda. Meanwhile, past and present collide as another player finally reveals themselves and makes their move. So I have been loving everything Boom Studios has been doing with Power Rangers. Uh, so right now in the, in the show or in the in the show uh, in the book, we've got uh, El Tarrant there. That is the race that Zordon is from. We've got some people from that planet on Earth helping the Power Rangers fight against Zed and Goldar and everything like that. Plus, the new Green Ranger has made a deal with the devil with Lord Zed and basically has, has said, hey, look, or Zed has come to the Rangers and say, hey, look, 
I'll leave you guys alone. I'll leave Earth alone if you if you let me kill Zordon. And so that was the deal they left them with at the end of last issue. Obviously, they're not they're not going to let that happen, but it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And then lastly, this week is Magic the Gathering number three. With their investigation into the role of one of Ravnica's biggest guilds in the assassination attempts on their lives leads to planewalk planeswalkers Cal sorry. Kaya, Ral, and Veraska deep into the Undercity. They will need to uh, succeed in the, in the impossible, un uncover the location of Dusk Mantle, the Demir Guild Hall, and survive to tell the tale. Meanwhile, the assassin is amassing guild members to betray their own guilds, even as their true motivations remain a mystery. So I have loved the first two issues of this series. You guys know I'm a huge Magic the Gathering fan. I'm actually, in a couple weeks, going to have my friends over for a sealed Modern Horizons 2 event. Everyone's going to bring their packs, we'll build our decks, and then play uh, a fun little tournament there. But I've been loving the first two issues of this. Uh, getting to, into the Planeswalkers and the guilds there on Ravnica, and that like the intrigue and the politics between them has been absolutely uh, fantastic. I thought I think they've done a pretty good job of making it accessible to non-magic players and non-magic fans. Uh, so hopefully you guys can enjoy this one as well. And of course I do reviews on this one or on these. All right, guys, that is all the comics that I am picking up this week. Be sure to let me know what comics you're getting down in the description or the, in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next week, we'll see you at the comic show.